2018년과 2019년 전 세계를 충격에 빠뜨린 두 번의 비행기 추락 사고 737 맥스는 연이어 추락했고 346명의 생명이 사라졌습니다. An Indonesia passenger plane crashing into the sea minutes after takeoff. Plane went down just outside the capital, killing everyone on board. 그리고 보잉은 미국 의회에 불려 나왔고 보잉 CEO는 이렇게 말했습니다. Is stunning. Describes what happened in Lion Air and Ethiopian Air. But what I find most stunning is your testimony here today that you said you first learned of this exchange a couple of weeks ago. Your testimony here earlier today is, well, we're not sure what they were talking about because he's not at Boeing anymore. Senator, as, as you mentioned, uh, see the details of this exchange until recently. On behalf of myself and the Boeing company, we are sorry, deeply and truly sorry. The airplane will return to service when it's safe. 그로부터 5년, 세상은 보잉이 달라졌을 거라 믿었습니다. 하지만 2024년 1월 5일 알래스카 항공 1282편 출입문이 공중에서 떨어져 나가는 사고가 발생했습니다. 그리고 또다시 시작된 청문회 This scrutiny to be held to the very highest standard is fundamental to why commercial aviation is by far the safest mode of transportation today. I come from this industry, and I know full well that this is an industry where we simply must get it right every single time. And from this experience, I understand the gravity of Boeing's role in upholding the integrity of aerospace safety in our industry. 안전의 본질을 생각하던 CEO. 하지만 상원 의원 조시 홀리의 몰아치는 발언의 앞뒤가 다른 민낯이 하나씩 드러나기 시작했습니다. What is it that, that you get paid currently? Senator, that's uh, well disclosed in, in our proxy documents uh, in each of the years that I've been employed. Yeah, but what is it? It's a big number, sir. Well, let me help you out. It's 32.8 million this year. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. That's a 45% increase over last year. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. What is it you get paid to do exactly? Safety. Is that a component of your salary? It sure is, Senator. 그렇다면 보잉 출신의 엔지니어는 어떻게 생각할까? So, my understanding is you worked on both the 787 and the 7777. Correct? Yes, sir. And you identified major safety concerns with both of these lines. Yes, sir. And you identified you identified these to your superiors. Yes, sir. I have written many memos time after time that we ha we can provide over a period of years i think uh, yeah this is like 3 year for the 777 i mean 787 it's been 3 years of effort and so your concerns how who knew about your concerns how far up the the chain do you know that they went i have gone as high as mark stockton and lisa fall who's the vice president the vice president of the company yeah you know have you seen the reports that the subcontractor that you use to make that door piece that fell out of the sky, that when the FAA went and toured the facility, they found one door seal being lubricated with Dawn liquid dish soap and cleaned with a wet cheesecloth, and another was being checked with a hotel room key card. Does that sound like safety to you? Senator, I, I think our relationship with that particular supplier has been well documented, reviewed by the FAA and most certainly us. And I'm very intent on acquiring that company so that none of that ever happens. Mm. You know, the FAA also says that Boeing still has not implemented the recommended steps back from 2019 and 2020 after the MAX crashes. You, you, you still have not taken the appropriate safety procedures or implemented what they recommended. I mean, how if safety is a component of your 33 million dollar compensation package i mean how, how can you possibly qualify for any of this 그리고 CEO 카로는 품질을 더욱 신경 쓰고 있다고 말했습니다 in our factories and in our supply chain we took immediate action to ensure the specific circumstances that led to this accident could never happen again importantly we went beyond to look comprehensively at our quality and manufacturing systems and we slowed things down dramatically 하지만 또 현실은 달랐죠. What about quality? Is quality part of your compensation package? Senator, I uh, I meet with the FAA pretty regularly. Uh, they don't hold anything back and I'm not aware of anything that has been cited with respect to those accidents. 
that we haven't uh, taken action on. Really? Because we've had whistleblowers. You said you'd listen to whistleblower testimony. We've had multiple whistleblowers come before this committee and allege that Boeing is cutting every possible corner on quality and safety, not just in the past, but now. They've alleged that you've eliminated safety inspections, that there are fewer in quality and there are fewer inspectors doing quality inspections out there. They've alleged that when they raised quality issues and concerns, they were reassigned, they were retaliated against, they were physically threatened. That doesn't sound like attention to quality to me. And yet you're getting paid $33 million a year. 그리고 충격적인 질문에 대한 답변을 듣자 사람들은 충격에 휩싸였습니다. Are these planes safe? Right now, I would not. You know, it's like an earthquake. You know, it, the big earthquake is coming, but when when that hits the building, that you know, you let's say if you're talking of a building, have to be prepared to uh, accommodate that type of a let's say shakeup. You know, it has to be built properly. Right now, from what I've seen, the airplanes are not being built per spec and per requirement. So you, your testimony is the 787 line and the 777. The triple seven line are, are you think are not are well not they safe. they are doing stuff that increases the risk factors okay when you increase the risk factors you know it's not just one you are doing stress concentrations that those stress concentrations like you know breaking a, a paper clip you know you do it once or twice it doesn't break but it breaks at some time as the plane gets older you know all of these things that you know you took You know, you said it's not a safety issue. It becomes a safety. 그리고 이어진 상원 의원의 공격적인 발언. 보잉 CEO가 안전이 아닌 자신과 주주들의 이익만을 위해 방향성을 잡고 있다고 신랄하게 비판합니다. You know, I I think the truth is, Mr. Calhoun, you're not focused on safety. You're not focused on quality. You're not focused on transparency. All of this is in the record. But I think actually, you're focused on exactly what you were hired to do, which is that you're cutting corners. You are eliminating safety procedures. You are sticking it to your employees you are cutting back jobs because you're trying to squeeze every piece of profit you can out of this country you're this company you're strip mining it you're strip mining boeing it was one of the greatest american companies ever it has employed thousands of people in my state and you are strip mining it for profit shareholder value and you're being rewarded for it you got a huge raise a huge increase so it's working out great for you for the american people they're in danger For your workers, they're in peril. For your whistleblowers, they literally fear for their lives. But you're getting compensated like never before. Don't you think maybe your priorities are, are misplaced here? You're in charge of a company. You're getting paid $33 million a year. You're in charge of a company that has systematically over decades now shipped out its job, shipped out its production. Over the last decade, while you've either been in charge of CEO or on the board, stock prices have rose 600% at Boeing. You've in fact done $59 billion in returning cash to shareholders, $20 billion of that in dividends, $39 billion of that in stock buyback. Some people are doing great here. I'm just wondering, given the fact that your airplanes are falling out of the sky, do you think that any of that has to do with the fact that you really don't make that much anymore in this country or in-house? I mean, hasn't it been a mistake to hollow out the company? and ship your production and your manufacturing and your know-how to other places around the world instead of doing it yourself, American engineers, American workers? Uh, Senator Ali, I, I, we're committed to making sure every employee feels empowered to speak up if they see a problem. We also have strict policies that prohibit retaliation against employees who come forward. 또 다른 거짓말을 늘어놓는 CEO. 그의 말과 다르게 현실 엔지니어가 겪는 상황은 이랬습니다. And the company's response to you was to threaten you? Threaten you, sideline you, you know, transfer you. You raised concerns about the 787, and so they transferred you, transferred you to the 777, right? Well, in, yes. Initially, they just cut me off of all the meetings. Huh. They took my name out, and then so I was just doing nothing. I wasn't informed of what. Then they transferred me, and they do it pretty stealthy. 
oh, we have a job over here. We want you to go over there. So they move you down there. And, you know, I come from like 40 years of engineering background. So when I see, pro and I've taken a lot of stress class, stress classes, even though I'm not a specialist on that, but when there's a problematic area that you see, you can recognize. So, so they, I just want to make sure I get the sequence right. So you raise these concerns, you get on the 787, you get transferred, or transferred over to the 777, you raise the concerns there, they ignore it in both, they, they haven't addressed any of these concerns, is that your testimony? Yes, sir. And at, one point, at some point they start to threaten you. You're talking about your, your boss calling you on your personal phone yeah. and, and berating you, and when did that start? Well, that started right after when I said, you know, we have made over 300 plus airplanes still don't know how to put the load and sell. What, what I mean by that, you know, if you build in an airplane, I mean, build in a house, it's like, you know, put in the foundation. You know, we have made over 300 airplanes. We still changing our process, like build the foundation to put the airplanes. We are struggling with that because they have changed the process you know, from stable to unstable situation. They're not building the, the same datums that we were building. So you're causing your own problem, but you don't want to admit it. Just force fit the problem, you know, force fit the misaligned holes and everything else and move on. And that's what they have been doing. And that's what I have brought up to their attention. I told my boss that I said in the, in the report, I said, we have made 300 plus airplanes. That should have been more than adequate for us to resolve these things. All the problems that we've had, we put Band-Aid over Band-Aid to resolve the problems and Band-Aid over Band-Aid doesn't cover it. Maybe we need to consider some engineering fundamentals with a little bit of GDNT to figure out what the problem is. And right after that, he came back to my desk and he, he like I said, you know, he made the threat. And then after that, he says, are you in or are you out? What Meaning what? Are you in and are you out with Boeing? I mean, are you going to be a good good citizen and keep your mouth shut? Was well, that the implication? Well, that, that's how I can, I can interpret that. He would walk by me and he said, you better... Then he said, I want you to write it in writing. Tell me, are you in or are you out? Put we it have, in writing whether or not you were going to... I'm were gonna, in or out. And what that means, are you going to just shut up? Right. Well, that's only that would be I, in. If you wanted to be in, you needed to be quiet. You needed to stop this. You know, don't don't say anything more. Certainly don't tell the public. Uh, that's how I interpret it. But he told me to write it in writing. And I'm trying to write it. And um, there was 10 emails just because I haven't received your email on this. Send it to me and this and that. So then he's pressuring you. I mean, then he's to... pressuring you. And then his manipulation even got further than that. You know, like, yeah, I'm trying to take a class on my own time that I have to flex the time. He wouldn't let me do that. Oh. You know, I'm trying, I have a doctor's appointment. He cancels my doctor appointment at oh. the same day. I mean, you know, different, manipulating different behavior. things to retaliate, to make your life miserable. And then, you know, I started talking to go somewhere else. You know, I, I mean, you know, you, you, you just try to escape from that because this is hell, you know, that I was yes. subjected to. And then he threatens you with that. And uh, really with my background, you know, I've had some, uh, um, you know, it's, it's really has made me where three o'clock in the morning, I'm waking up with somebody stabbing me. You know, I'm still receiving psychological help to just get back on normal. Well, it, it is, it is unbelievable to me that in the midst of this safety crisis at this corporation, that what they're doing is threatening their own engineers, whose job it is to help identify potential safety concerns. And rather than saying, you know what, you've got a point, we need to maybe do something about this. They're telling you to hide it. They're reassigning you. They're threatening you. They're trying to shut you up. In the meantime, I noticed this guy, Dave Calhoun, I think he's the CEO. I guess he's leaving at the end of the year. I wonder how much he's getting paid. 이에 상원 의원은 강한 워딩을 사용하며 보잉 CEO 자체에 문제가 있다고 지적합니다. I've listened to your testimony and you know it seems like the gist of it seems to be that if you could just get your employees to comply, you know, follow the rules, follow your your management techniques, etc., things would be better. I don't think the problems with the employees. Oh, it's actually, not. It is yeah, not. I, I think I the problems with you. You it's the C-suite. It's the management. It's what you've done to this company. That's where the problem is. The problem's at the top. Your engineers, they're probably the best in the world. Your machinists, they're outstanding. You're the problem. And I just hope to God that you don't destroy this company before it can be saved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.